So guys, today I'm going to talk about the four main four bays from Synology now in 2018. I already covered this last year and on NASCompares.com there, but it seems like you guys still haven't quite got to grips with the main difference between these four four bays. So without further ado, this is the four bay comparison for Synology NAS. <laughs> Okay, so straight away, as you can see on the screen, we have the two, oh, sorry, we have the four four bays on the screen there for you to see. Now, before we start getting to grips, obviously I've put the prices up there, and again, they're not there, ooh, graphics. But let's talk first about whichever one of these four you're gonna go for, there, there's certain things that all of them are gonna do. So if you're only gonna use one or two of the things on the list I'm about to say, then chances are any of these four NASs will float your boat. But, and of course, I'm reading from my script behind the camera. First and foremost, they all arrive with the Synology App Center, and that's Synology DSM 6.1 or 6.2 there in the future, if it's out of beta yet. Um, so you've got all the host of apps there for Office Productivity, CRM, CMS, and of course, home and media-based applications too, as well as backups as well, and a whole huge number of Synology's own first-party apps. Um, on top of that, all of four of these NASs are DLNA, Digital Living Network Alliance certified. That means if they're in your home or business network environment, they will be able to communicate with and the files be accessed by other DLNA devices that share the same network. So very quick, easy, almost network-based plug-and-play activity there from all four of these NASs. Next, they've all got dual rear-mounted fans to keep things cool inside that are completely controllable in case the noise can get a bit annoying or temperatures rise. So all of them have got um, temperature sensors and manual and automatic fan control as well. All of them have got RAID support, uh, RAID, a redundant array of independent disks, um, so all of them support SHR, RAID 0, RAID 1, RAID 5, RAID 6, RAID 10, RAID 50 and RAID 60. All of them arrive with that feature and functionality. Next, they can all be used for surveillance and CCTV via the utilization of IP cameras. That's network-based cameras in your home environment. So they all arrive with two camera licenses and that great surveillance station software from Synology. All with that control the deck and live view and the ability to record from multiple IP cameras in your home or business environment. The software is completely free. It records onto it and you can access that footage live or set up all the SMS and email alerts and uh, temperature sensors and noise detection, and motion detection, depending on the cameras. All of that is available to you with that software included in all four of these NASs. All four of these NASs can be utilized and accessed by the mobile applications from Synology, DS file, DS video, DS picture, all the rest of it. There's so many mobile applications, for iOS and Windows systems, um, uh, mobile, and of course, the Android platform too. Loads of apps to access your Synology now. So once again, depending on whichever of these four you go for. On the subject of operating platforms, they can all be utilized by Windows, Android, and um, Mac systems. So they can all appear on the file manager and do a great deal more with um, applications on those platforms. They can all be used in those environments. They all can be utilized as download managers, FTP, HTTP, NB NZB, and BT, downloads are uh, you can set up a whole automated download schedule and indeed rss for your podcasters all of that can be done on these four NASs. next they can all be used as email managers so you can use it to store all your important emails or user email exchange services uh, service or indeed utilize synology's own email client software for collaborating with your colleagues they can all be used as web servers and indeed wordpress servers as well for all of your files and keeping things moving and more importantly, centralized and safe. They can all be populated with the very latest hard drives, 10 and 12 TB from the likes of WD and Seagate. And of course, all of them don't have to be populated with four drives. They can all run on a single hard drive or SSD as you see fit and you can add drives as you go. That, of course, depending on which RAID level you go for. So as you can see, all four of these are incredibly productive NASs. And if you were to buy any of these four NASs, in 2018, then you're going to be getting a good NAS that can do all of the things I described. But you didn't come here to know what they can, you know, what they got in common. You want to know what they're different. Um, so let's go first and foremost. Let's go with the lesser ones. Let's go for the DS. 418J and the DS418. The only reason I say they're the lesser ones is because they feature hardware inside that is more based on the idea of value, more based on the idea of cost-effective nature. They both feature a Realtek CPU. Um, the J-series rolls with a dual-core CPU, and that's a, a Realtek 12, 
1093, I believe, and that's one gig of DDR4 memory as well. Uh, it supports SHR and all the stuff we discussed, as well as CCTV. It can support about 15 to 16 cameras, I believe, and then on top of that, it also runs the Synology Office application and can be utilized in the likes of Apple Time Machine and more for those backups. Um, uh, you know, it, it is a good NAS and it supports AES uh, trans, um, encryption, AES 256. And it can be kind of the, the J series NAS, the 418J, is kind of a file server NAS. It can be utilized for media, but by no means to the same degree as the other three NASs today. So if you're looking for a simple file server from Synology, but you want that versatility and of course two years of warranty, that is the unit for you. The DS418J, however, does not support Plex because of that CPU and of course transcoding, forget it. Next, it doesn't support virtual machines. It just does not have the CPU or indeed the memory to do that. VMs being virtual uh, machines, VMs. It doesn't support 4K. I mean, it probably you probably could play some stuff to uh, H.265, but it isn't really going to perform that well. But it does um, play 1080p and streams it easily over DLNA media server in your home. And it utilizes that horrible bread bin chassis there, as you can see. It's got that. You know, the back panel removes and all plastic trays and no hot swapping either. So you have to power down the device if you want to swap the trays. It's got USB 3 uh, ports on it, but again, very disappointing indeed. So if you need a simple file server NAS or you're buying a NAS to act as a backup to your existing NAS system, this is definitely one to consider. Now the DS418, however, there's a big, big jump between the J and the non-J, otherwise known as the value NAS. It's got a quad-core CPU, it's got another Realtek CPU, and that Realtek CPU there is um, a quad-core, I believe 1.4 gigahertz, and it arrives with two gig of DDR4 memory. So twice in every regard to the, to the DS418J. Now this can transcode 4K, it can transcode HD. It's not really used for VMs, it supports more cameras, I think 20 to 25 cameras there. Um, and it's just a better NAS overall than the, uh, than the J. So if you are looking for files and media, but you're still not going to push this device, um, but you need it for the home or a small business, the standard DS418 is still a very good NAS for you. Again, VMs, it isn't going to support it. Plex doesn't support it at all. The app isn't even available because of that ARM V8 based CPU. We talked about that on another video. Um, it is a good NAS. But again, it is a value NAS, it is a cost-effective NAS, and the 418 is for someone that doesn't really look to push their NAS environment and are looking more on a file level, but they want an option of NAS, they want the option uh, of multimedia, they want the option of streaming their media, their, you know, their MP3s, their MOVs, their WMVs, these sort of files that may need changing music and video throughout the home, but again, not looking to push the device and not looking to do anything very resource intensive. So those are the ARM base uh, NASs that we'll talk about today. Let's move on to the other two. Now these, like the previous two, seem to be very similar on paper and their prices seem to be quite close together. Of course, we're talking about the 418 Play and the DS918 Plus. Generally, people seem to find that they're either trying to choose between those two or those two. Almost never are they trying to choose between the four. And that's because Synology have kind of bracketed these four bays into this two and two. Because the 418 Play and the 918 have both got an Intel J series CPU. It's a Celeron chip, an x86 architecture chip. That means that you've got 4K transcoding. You've got AES NI, an improved uh, encryption system that encrypts uh, far more efficiently and therefore your read and write speeds are considerably better. Um, they both arrive um, with uh, the ability to improve the RAM. The Play arrived with two gig of RAM. The DS918 Plus arrived with four gig of RAM. But both can be upgraded um, to either six gig officially in the case of the Play Series NAS and the 918 can be upgraded to eight gig. Now unofficially, they can both be upgraded higher. They can both, uh, the Play can be upgraded up to 10 gig of DDR3 memory and the 918 Plus can be upgraded all the way up to 16. But this is unofficially using crucial DDR3L memory and I don't recommend doing that unless you don't mind your warranty being invalidated. On the subject of warranty, the DS418 Play arrives with two years of warranty, the DS918 Plus arrives with three years of warranty. And the difference between these two NASs, this is where we start seeing the difference because it's not 
they've got a very similar platform, but it's what they're doing with their hardware that makes all the difference. You probably noticed the price there. The difference is about 50 or 60 quid. And it should also be mentioned that all the prices on the video uh, today don't include the VAT or tax. So depending on where you buy it, that will make a difference to you. But nevertheless, the marginal price difference between these is about 50 or 60 quid. But for that, you get a quad-core Intel J-Series CPU on the Narmon 8, the J435, whereas the other one has a dual-core, the player has a dual-core CPU. You have more, you have twice the memory, so two gig against four gig by default. Both of them utilize BTRFS. There's no denying that. It is a fantastic file system, but it runs better because of the hardware on the Narmon 8 Plus, that wonderful background integrity checks and snapshot support that it provides. Um, they both have dual LAN ports there on the rear. And in this age of 4K and larger files, link aggregation has never been more important. That's why you've got the dual ports there on the rear. Because if you've got a link aggregated or lag or port trunking enabled switch, you can connect two cables into that NAS and thereby effectively double your upload and download to the NAS itself. But of course, that does depend on the connections of the other devices. Um, they can both be utilized in both a home and business setting because both of them support um, virtualization and VMs. But of course, there is better performance uh, in terms of VMs and Synology, virtualization, uh, Synology Virtual Machine Manager on the 918 Plus because of the better CPU, so more cores, and of course, the increased RAM options are open to you on that 918. Uh, on top of that, the devices themselves, although they've got exactly the same chassis, have one big, big, big difference, and that is the inclusion of NVMe SSDs on the 918. Now, if you're not aware, um, what, what SSD cache is, the difference between cache and memory, cache is long-term, memory is short-term. So if you're doing operations very sporadically and you need a boost now, you go for memory. If you need a long-term boost, where files are commonly being accessed, you need SSD caching because it will move files onto the SSDs and thereby speeding up common accessed files and their transit, uh, or not so much the transit, so much as the read and write within the device itself. Now, the 918, once again, that price difference there, the NVMe slots, and there's two of them on the DS918, that feature alone makes up for the price difference. It is the only NAS that I know that by default arrives with two NVMe slots. Um, these SSD NVMEs have come down in price considerably, and some of the ones from Samsung, the Samsung 960 series in Evo and Pro, some of those drives can be uh, read up to over 3,000 megabits per second. To put that into perspective, most of the hard drives you'll ever deal with are, you know, a sixth or a tenth of that, depending on the design of the drive. So you are getting insane speeds there. Um, with those SSDs, something you will never ever see in terms of SSD caching on the 418 Play. You can install a traditional hard drive there that will use SATA, but you'll never get those speeds in terms of read and write caching as you will on the 918 with those NVMEs. Now, the NVMEs are sold separately, and of course you have to pay extra for those. But if you're doing virtual machine management, if you're doing large scale backups, if you want to increase your, increase your IOPS, individual operations, NVMe upgrades on the 918 are hugely beneficial. And the last point, I should say, is to do with warranty. The DS418 Play arrives with two years of warranty and the 918 with three years. That's another area in which that price difference is more than compensated for. Because if you have a problem in those years with your hardware, Synology will do a very quick turnaround on replacing that unit. And it's definitely something to bear in mind. So, that is the four bays. Ultimately, if you're looking for a file server NAS and no media, go for that DS418J. If your needs are more file than media, but you want the option of media, go for the DS418. If your needs are multimedia and not file, go for the Play, because the Play is so well defined towards multimedia for 4K support on H.264 and 265. And finally, if you want ample coverage for both media and files, go for the DS918+. Plus. That really is the main difference between these four NASes. We will see more NAS as the years go on, and I'll do a video on the QNAPs very shortly. But if you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, click like and subscribe there at the bottom. It's quite literally the least you can do. It helps support this channel, and it keeps videos like this going. I hope you enjoyed this, and I look forward to seeing you next time. But otherwise, cheerio, and don't forget to visit NAS Compares.